Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, thank you for tuning in. You're here um, uh, with uh, Clint and my daughter Rachel. This is the True Vine Show. And I want to thank everybody for um, just uh, stopping by, you know, hanging out with us. We're going to have a good time today. We got a really special show today. I have my uh, my daughter, uh, Rachel Curtis, right there. there. You know, um, you know. At times I forget her last name, but sometimes I was just joking on this time. But <laughs> I know she is uh, Rachel Ross, and I am uh, I'm Clint Curtis. You know, I, you know she don't have the Curtis name no more, but that is all good because she is going to be starting her own tribe, her mm-hmm. own Ross tribe. Her and her husband, Delander Ross. The Rosses. Your yeah, Rosses are going to be the bosses <laughs> in 2000 Fosses, you know. Bosses. So, hey, so it's all good. So, uh, today we got a very special show today. Um, we have a very, very um, uh, special show because... Um, uh, um, because, uh, yeah... Um, I'm sorry. I'm trying to, you know, work everything. And, you know, work to work everything and you talk the at the same up, time. So. The chat, huh? The chat is up. You gotta get the chat up on there. Oh yeah. Okay. Give me one second, folks. We're um, we're not we're not uh we're not um, we're not uh, we're not going through any technical difficulties. Or anything. No, we're everything just, sounds good. We're we're just trying to get uh you know trying to work everything. I'm, I'm like a one man band, you know. So, <laughs> hey, bro, love you, brother. We're gonna have a good time tonight. Um, hold on, let me see. There we go. I gotta get things back again. Let me get. Let me blow my screen here. I'm trying to work the laptop. I'm trying to work the mixer. I'm trying to work the switcher. Uh, <laughs> it looks good. So uh, yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, um, yeah. Okay, we're ready to roll, man. We 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 were we were five minutes late. Please <laughs> um uh, please please forgive us for being five minutes late. Um. But like I said, this is all brand new to us. You know, we're trying to, like I said, I'm trying to make sure the audio is good. I'm trying to, uh, before we got started, I'm, I'm tweaking lights, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get Rachel's face exposed. I'm trying to get my face. If my face is too bright, hers is not bright enough. So a lot goes into these things, you know. So we're trying to be, the Bible says to do everything with excellence. Mm-hmm. And that's what we try to do here at the True Vine Show in a True Vine Ministry. So that's what it's, that's that's our new thing. We're, we're True Vine Ministries. Yep. And if anybody don't know what, what, uh, what True Vine is, True vine is is Jesus Christ. In John 15, when he says, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. Amen. Meaning God takes care of Jesus. He makes sure everything is good with Jesus because Jesus is the boss of us. So, um, so yeah, he says, you know, but you are the branches. You know, and without me, if you cut a branch off a tree, what's going to happen? Mm-hmm. You know, it, 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 in, in the scriptures of the verse, it says that if you cut that uh, uh, um, if you cut that off, cut, cut the limb off, then it's going to wither away and die. He said, I can't do nothing with that. But he said, if you remain in me, he said, I will prune you. Yep. So you will bear more fruit. Amen. So Amen. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to pass it over to my daughter real quick, uh, Rachel Ross. I got it right this time. Um, <laughs> pass it over to Rachel Ross. How you doing, Rachel? I'm doing great. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing real good. I'm doing real good. You good. know, I'm just, uh, what do we always say? We're thankful and grateful. Amen. Amen. We're thankful and we're grateful because... Um, there's so many things that uh, that we have that we take mm-hmm. for granted. Like I'm real, I'm real particular about wasting water. Yeah, I've always taught you that, huh? Yeah, don't waste for water. Real. Um, uh, I, I got a small pet peeve. You got to please forgive me on the next one. Oh, we'll <laughs> have it fixed. Uh, I was telling Rachel, but this really bugs me. Um, there's a slight buzz. There's a buzz in this video um, because the microphone needs to be grounded. Uh, I need to get an isolator. But by the next, I didn't have time to order it in time for the show. But the next time we come on. Um, I will have it. There won't be any buzz in the signal, but the signals are strong. They sound good, but there's a slight buzz. So please don't let that distract you because it, it distracts me, but I can't, I got to get it past it in Jesus name. So Rachel, back to you. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now, we'll, uh, yeah, let's get some music going. Let's, let's do some praise and worship. All righty. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We praise your holy name. Oh, so good. Boy, you're so good. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you, Lord. Shall I fear? Whom shall I 
to us, Lord. We worship you. Yes, Lord, we worship you, Lord. Hallelujah.
worship you, Jesus. You're so holy, Jesus. So mighty, so great. Your name is holy. Hey, everybody, we love you. Thank Your you for. Your name is great. Thank you for tuning in. We love you, church family.
bless hearts and you would touch hearts, God. That you would fill minds right now, Jesus. That whatever distractions are going on in our lives, whatever things that seem like they're overpowering us right now, God, we rebuke them in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. God, we want you to fill our minds, God, and fill our hearts with the things of you. That when life seems like it's seems like it's going into the toilet, God, that you are there. You are our helper, our healer, Jesus. Yes, Lord. We run to you, God. Yes, God. God, you're you're all that we want, God. That our prayer is that we would do we would want nothing else other than you, Jesus. Yes, we just want you. We just want your love. We just want your peace, Jesus. Rachel Ross, and um, yeah, uh, I want to thank everybody for tuning in, so at this time, we're going to just uh, talk a little bit about, uh, you know, some things, but uh, I just want to talk to my uh, my daughter right now about, you know, this things about, with, about young people, because, um, you know, she's young, and, you know, and uh, she, uh, you know, she was in the youth ministry and, and, you know, dealing with young people. So, um, Rachel Ross, um, how you doing? I'm doing really good. How are you? I'm doing good. Again, um, Excuse me. um, I, I do apologize for the buzzing. Um, but next time you come on, that won't be a problem. My daughter's probably like, going, okay, dad, enough, enough. But I'm real picky about my, 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 my sound, how things sound. <laughs> and um, buzzing just drives me crazy, you know, <laughs> just crazy with it. But I apologize, and it, it is what it is today. But, um, yeah, so, um, Rachel, um, the young people today, they're uh, they are really going through through a lot. Uh, would you mm-hmm. agree? They're going yeah, through so agree. much. Uh, and when you guys uh, had the worst, I mean, the uh, the youth uh, the youth uh, service um, at church, um, what was the response of some of the uh, young people when he was trying to, like, I know when you try to preach to them, they they might be just doing their own thing or just, um, you know, uh, acting foolish or mm-hmm. like that. What, what, did, um, what, what's the, what's the, 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 what I'm trying to say, what is the response of the young people today? I think the response of, like, the like youth is just kind of like, um, oops, sorry. It's kind of just, like, blocked out. Like, no matter what you tell them, it's kind of just like there's like this barrier, this wall that's kind of set up because they're so they're so filled with like TikTok and in social media and their friends and their like that's what's in their ears like that's what's in their consciousness like yeah. they're not really thinking about you know Christ you know sometimes you can get a word to them and it's like oh I hear that you know but a lot of times that's what's filling their minds that's their life that's like school. Um, social media, like that's what's consuming their lives. So a lot of times when you try to talk to the youth, it's like kind of like you're hitting this wall because the enemy has them so filled with like everything else other than God. Like they have yeah. so many other outlets that they can receive, you know, things from other than Christ. Yeah. So it's like they're kind of like this wall set up. So it's always, um, you know, hard to like when you're speaking with youth and you're, when you're, working with youth to like get through to that because yeah you gotta you gotta fight past all these different barriers that they already have blocked you know have their having their ears blocked with they just um like young people you know um we don't know what they go through on a Mm -hmm. daily basis you know like when i was growing up even when you was growing up the spirit is so much different yeah i agree because we are living in some in some really really bad times these Mm -hmm. are these are these are the last of the last days you know these are the the end time stuff. This we're in the tail end of it, you know. Yeah. And of course, you know the the enemy's going to turn up his heat. You mm-hmm. know, he's going to turn up the heat because he knows his time is short. Amen. Yeah. So, uh, but our young people, they really have a, a, um, 
it's, it's a stronghold against them, yeah. and that's from the enemy because he don't. He's trying to. He's trying to. He's trying to start with the young generation and transform yeah. their minds and, and and start a new, a generation of of of, uh, of just this evil, sick, yeah. demonic world that we live in. So, yeah, um, you know, we we're, we're gonna be later on praying for the young people, you yeah. know, and um, yeah, but I'm gonna I'm gonna real quick uh talk about like um, uh. When you, when you was young, uh, mm-hmm. you know, going to church, when, when I started taking you to church, yeah. how, how old were you when you started? Um, I probably started going to church when I was four or five, maybe four turning five. That's when I start, just started going, you know, to church with you. Um, and so I've just been going ever since. Uh, but it's not to say that I didn't have struggles as a youth growing up, but I have, you know, fleshly desires or mm-hmm. it wasn't like I was just perfect growing up. I There was a a point where I had to choose Christ for myself. Amen. And, you know, when I had to make that decision. Um, so it, yeah. it's definitely, uh, <laughs> it helped, you know, you yeah. taking me to church, but, um, it's, I had to choose Christ for myself, you know, Yeah. in a, in a sense. So did it, um, did it help having, um, a godly father oh, in a home? Like a hundred thousand uh, percent. Um, you know, like I know that a lot of uh, young people, they don't have godly parents, you no. know, and, and, um, and, and, um, and they're trying to fill it out on their own. Yeah. And then that can be a hard thing. I, I, would, I would imagine that would be a hard thing for them. Yeah. And a lot of times, you know, the same thing with our youth. You know, we got kids that are, you know, whose parents don't live for Christ. So it's like they come to church and they feel this joy. They feel this love. They feel the presence of Christ. And then they go home and then it's all this darkness, you know. Yeah. So when you, when you, that's how it was a, so, so helpful for me to have, you know, church at home and then have church at church, you know. Yeah. Like you being my, my, you know, my dad, you know, you taught me all the things, you know, and I, I learned from, from seeing you, you know, like a lot of my things, like, you know, with the way I tie, the way I, even small things, like don't put anything on top of your Bible. Like that's not really like yeah. in the Bible, but that's yeah. just something that you did. And, and I always yeah. do it, you know, yeah. because you, you learn from your parents. So it's yeah. always great to have church and, you know, the body of Christ, but when they have parents that follow follow the lord like that's top tier that's amazing yeah. and i think that uh you know like <laughs> pe- some kids who have um parents that do go to church and take them to church or they you know um a lot of times we know when 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 you when you're not living the life you know mm-hmm. when you're when you're not um when you're not uh uh, you're going to church, and then on, on Sunday you're being, you, you're you're being Christian in front of your yeah. children. Then 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 when you go home, right. it's all this stuff going on. Like man, my parents are so hypocritical. You know, yeah. they act like they're so churchy at church, but mm-hmm. you know, um, but when we get home, man, it is it's, it's a free for all. You know, yeah, what I'm saying right. and that and that has a lot to do for sure with uh with your kids in mind, especially when they're younger. You know, it's they, confusing. You know, it's confusing. The, yeah. So it's like. That's what I try to do. Like yeah. with my with with my, with my daughter, I always try to just um, uh, you know, when I'm at home, I'm the same person. Right. I'm not a fake type of person. Like when I <laughs> when I'm at church, I'm me. I'm Clint. Same way. When, I, when I'm at home, I'm Clint. You know, when I go home, my daughter don't see me. Like man, my dad, he's just like fake it's fake you know he's all this you know bubbly christian man at church when we come home and he's watching rated r movies right. he's cussing he's you know talking to girls on the phone he's right. going on dates you know and he got these all these girls at the house and you know like what, right. what is that you know what how does that speak to your kids you know yeah you tell your kids uh not to smoke right but they see you smoking mm-hmm. you know that 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 the mess is like rachel said it mess up their mind yeah. you know what i'm saying rachel what are you like when we used to come home, like it was all the same. It's always it? the same. That's why I always respected that. Like it was never like, oh, my dad's one way at church and then he's at home another way. It was never ever like that. It was always the same guy at church, same guy at home, same jokes at home, same jokes at church. Like there was no, you know, difference. And like that speaks so much volumes to like you know <sighs> a kid. Like okay, my my dad's real. He's the real deal. You know, like he's not he's not faking about this. He's not you know. So yeah. I that was always you yeah. know so helpful to me as as a kid growing up like and that teaches me not to be one way at church one way at home like I'm the same I'm the same way all around you can catch me at home to church work yeah. you know like you're not gonna see me swearing at work and see yeah. me you know I'm I'm gonna be the same all the way around because yeah you know that's that's not how a Christian Christians aren't supposed to be like that you know like yeah um so that's very important as a uh, all, mm-hmm. all you parents out here listening you know. 
whatever you do, your kids are going to think that that's okay. Exactly. So don't tell your kids, you know, hey, uh, you know, don't do this and don't do that. And they see you doing it. They're not going to do it in front of you, but right. they're going to do it behind your back mm-hmm. because they say, man, my, my dad does that. Right. But he's always saying, don't do what I do, but he's doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. You, know, you can't you can't do that as if when you're raising your kids, you know, and you're telling them, you know, don't do this. You have to live it too. For real, yeah. You have to be that example. Yeah. You know, you parents out there, you have to be the example uh, for your kids. You know, mm-hmm. your kids are watching you. You yep. know what I mean? You know, and you're sending your kids to church, and you're not going. Mm-hmm. What what is the, oh I'm I'm, I'm going to send my kid to church, but I want them to I want them to do the, the, the right. Don't do what I right. do. But then they come home, mm-hmm. and they see you doing all this crazy stuff. And you're the parent. It starts with you. Right. Everything starts with you. So that's why, you know, like when I when I raise my daughter Rachel, mm-hmm. you know, if you raise your kids up in the way that, that they go, they should, they won't depart. Mm-hmm. You know. And so now, you know, <laughs> if, if I would have did my thing, you had my testimony on my last yeah. uh, one. You know, uh, if if you didn't, you know, if I would have did the right thing, my daughter wouldn't have been where she is. Right. Now, I'm not going to get into, you know, who, who all would have been raising her, but who would have been raising her, they would have been in church. Mm-hmm. And right. she wouldn't have met uh, her nice, fine young <laughs> husband. Right. Talk about you and your husband for a minute, Rachel. Um, so I met Delander at church, you know, and that's an amazing thing that I met him, you know, th- through church because I was brought up in church and I also, you know, love church. But, um, yeah, I met my husband through, uh, we had like a basketball tournament, you know, that we had there and... um. You know, I, we, I was going around taking pictures with everybody, and I, I was taking pictures because I was, like, one of the event. I was doing the signatures and stuff, whatever. Mm-hmm. And so I took a picture, and he was in, like, the back of the picture with another girl with <laughs> us, like, together. <laughs> and he's like, hey, can you send me that picture? He's trying to get my my info. Yeah, so I was wanted... like, you can't get my number. You can get my, uh, like, uh, yeah. message so app daddy, or whatever. Daddy ain't playing that. <laughs> I already knew that. You holding know? it down. I already knew. That's another thing that the dad does. <laughs> The dad protects his family, mm-hmm. right? But his real. daughters, like, ain't, ain't no knuckleheads coming up in my in right. my, my my court. You know what exactly. I mean? And I wouldn't even bring him around my dad if I didn't, you know, whatever. But, uh, you know, it, as it developed, you know, I started to like him. He started to like me. Um, so we kind of like were dating, but we weren't really dating. And I couldn't like, I didn't want to date him because I knew that my dad said, I, you know, you're not, you're too young today. I met him when I was 14. You know, I was turning 15, but it's way too young to date. So um, we kind of like, talked you know text and stuff you know for a little while and then i just told him one day i was like i gotta tell my dad and he's like what you know i was like i gotta tell him i can't i can't hide it from him it's like eat he, he killing me inside and he's like are you sure you know you know we may not be able to talk anymore i was like well, i gotta just tell him so i remember i came in the studio and i was yeah. like i start crying you're like what's wrong i was like I'm talking. I'm dating a boy you're like i remember what is going on i was like i'm like oh man some knucklehead is still <laughs> And I was like, no, he's from church. And you're like, okay, you know. I was like, all right. You mean, I mean, like, he ain't dating, dating nobody. I'm like, no, like, right. What he come peek on his bike or something like that? You're, you're just hanging out at church and stuff. Like, you're not going to the movies and going right, out and right. all that kind of stuff. So it was like, I felt a lot better that, about yeah, that. Yeah, so then it was that next service my dad would pick, my dad would pick him up for church. And so he's like... Everybody got out of the car except for like Rachel and Delander. <laughs> so we were sitting in the car. You're just like, you know, you got to prove yourself. You know, if you want to talk to my daughter, I don't even know who you are like that. You know, you got to you got to prove yourself to me, you know. And so it was, you know, it's been it was time years and years. You know, yeah. I became, you know, like from 14, 15, 16, 17. Mm-hmm. He's always there, you know, like a really great friend of mine. I yep. we still, you know, we're like we still liked each other, you know. And not saying we did everything perfect, you know, we didn't yeah. do everything perfect, but like we still kept our purity intact, which is hey, so, man. so amazing. I'm so grateful Thank for you, that. Jesus. So, um, you know, up to that point, you know, really when we started to actually date, you know, we asked, you know, my dad, you know, I'm not well, allowed to date, you know, and uh, almost right after, maybe a year later, we uh, got engaged. So, yeah. um, um, uh, you know, he like when I told Delander, I said, I said, um. I told him, I said, hey, man, um, you know, <laughs> my daughter's 15 years old. She's not allowed to date, you know. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I don't know when, when I'm going to let her date, you know. But um, but we're going to see, you know, you know, like I said, prove, prove, prove to us, you know, prove mm-hmm. to me. And so um, I don't know who he'd be texting me or Rachel. He said, it's what he said. It, it really blew me away. He said, I'll wait as long as it takes. <laughs> I was like, okay, we're going to see. Mm-hmm. 
because it's, it ain't going to be for a year or two or three years. Maybe. I don't know. But yeah, when I told my daughter she can date, it was, she was around like 18, yeah, 18. Uh, and she didn't even, they didn't even date yet. I said, mm-hmm. you can go ahead and date. She still, they still waited till she was yeah. like 19 or whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm like, dang, girl, I said, you can go date them, go date them, you know what I mean? And Yeah, we, so, didn't, we weren't even really like, I started going out to like eat and stuff, you know, around <laughs> 18, so, but yeah, it, it just, I really think that, um, you know, my dad being like the, the protector of me, of my heart, you know, and just showing me how, a, how a man's supposed to treat, you know, a woman, like, it, it set my standard high and, you know, Delander met that and even exceeded a little bit more, like, I'm I'm happily happily married. I love Amen. you know like I I love my marriage. I love my husband. Like it's just so so great because all because my dad. You know like you know I could have I could have been out dating and doing all this different crazy stuff, but I didn't because I respected my dad. But that respect came from you know him raising me like to respect him to love him, but not just like oh I'm scared of my dad, but also I can trust my dad with anything. I could tell him. Hey, yeah. I, I messed up, and I and I, but I know, even if I messed up, he's still gonna love me because you yeah, know he's right. he shown me you know that love. So it's just it's just been a great a great amazing testimony you know, process. <laughs> you know, like I used to tell people when my daughter was younger, you know, I said I trust my daughter. Mm-hmm. I said whatever she's gonna do, she's gonna do. I'm not about to be checking her phone and and, and let me see yeah. your phone. Kids are gonna do what they're gonna do, okay? Mm-hmm. If you're in a, in, a, in a marriage, yeah. If your wife's gonna cheat on you, she's gonna cheat on you. Right. If your husband's gonna cheat on you, he's gonna do it. Mm-hmm. You can't be with him twenty four seven. Right. You just gotta trust him, you know. Yep. So I always trust in my daughter. And people say you better check Rachel's phone. I said, look, whatever Rachel does, I'm I'm living right. I'm mm-hmm. teaching her right. That's all I can do. God, is, she has her own relationship with God, right? You and know? that was another thing too. Yeah. Like, you know, like it was more like, you know. I'm living for God for myself. So I, overall, I fear God more than I fear my fear my Amen. dad. Like if That's if right. something bad's gonna if it's if my life goes crazy, you know I'm I'm accountable to God. I'm not I, I am accountable That's to my right. dad. But overall, before anything, my, God is top tier. Then my dad, and then right. you know so like. Like th- that's what he would teach me. He would always tell me, like, you know, I trust you. Don't. He'd always say, don't break my trust. That was always a thing. So I never wanted to break my dad's trust. But ultimately, like, he would tell me, you know, that's that's up to you and God. That's between you and God. And that was that stuck with me so much is because my relationship with God is more important than that's than right. any relationship that Amen. I have in my life. So it just it just all worked out because yeah, I never I never tried to, you know, bottleneck my daughter. Mm-hmm. Or, make her go i didn't make her go to church you know, when you start forcing your kids to do things you know that is that is not you know god don't force us to do things right he says i'll sit before you life and death choose mm-hmm. what, he, what he, god says you can choose to do whatever you want people ask me like clint why did god make evil he had to make evil so he so he can give you a choice mm-hmm. if there was only one uh, uh one choice of good how right. would god know your heart because you only have one choice right but if you put evil in the world oh now he knows what you really want you know what I'm saying? He 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 knows that you oh, you chose you chose evil. Mm-hmm. That's what you really want to yeah. do. So I told my daughter. I said, "Look, whatever you do, I mean, <laughs> I can't stop you. Right. you know what I mean, I'm telling you, I'm telling you what I want you to do. Mm-hmm. I don't want you to do that. You know, what right. I'm saying? I don't want you to live like that. I don't right. want you to be dating and you know and, and having sex with boys. I don't want right. you to do that. But you can do whatever you want to do. Right. You know what I'm saying I'm not, I'm not saying I want you to go. You can do whatever you want to do. Not like that. It's just like." Kids are gonna do what they they're gonna do. Like you try right. to, if you try to check their phone, they got these special apps. They can hide stuff. You can't. Right. I mean, I mean, you can't. You know, I mean, give me your phone. Let me check your phone. You can check it all you want to. You, right. you, you're not gonna find that hidden app that I got. Exactly. Uh, uh, you know, whatever they call them. They got these little yeah. Stuff. Kids, right. kids know what they're doing. You know, what I'm saying like, so you know, I'm just saying. I don't. We're going on a slight rabbit trail, but kind of not on a rabbit trail. But yeah, man, don't 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 try to like force your kids to do things. Let let, let them. You know, say look. Trust them, you know, and, and I always trust my daughter, and, mm-hmm. and then we have a uh, a great relationship. relationship yeah, we you know? do. So, <laughs> like, I'm, I'm grateful, you know. I'm so yeah. thankful, you know. Me I'm so too. thankful how my daughter turned out, and um, I tell her all the time how proud I am of her. Like, <laughs> yep. you know, and like, she started pin when she because like, I I do music. Mm-hmm. I love music. I love video. That's what I do. That's what I'm called to do. That's what this ministry is about. It, it's about media and audio and video, like yeah. making you know music. I do music. We do music. 
So, you know, we're working on some new things, guys. Uh, for yeah. Guys put some things. I, we can't let the cat out the bag, but uh, <laughs> it's a big, 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 big deal. When I say yeah. this is a big deal, it's a big thing. I can't say anything now yeah. because I, I it, it's not in motion yet, but I, I'm just going by what God told me. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's a great thing. Yeah, It's a really good thing. <laughs> I'm so excited about it. There's a few people that know. Yeah. There's a few people that know. Um <laughs> But I'm gonna let as soon as I as soon as I get some final confirmation and things get rolling and um and, and, and when things are in motion, I'm gonna let you guys know and and, and you can you can it's gonna blow your socks off. Amen. Because it's a very very special thing. Mm-hmm. It's not nothing to do about us building our own kingdoms. It's about us building God's kingdom. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? A lot of people want to build their own kingdom. You know they want to build their own kingdom. Like I want to start my own brand. I want to start my own clothing line. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if you put God first, you know. I like uh, what we was talking about, Rachel, about what Pastor Cliff was talking about. He said, um, if you delight in me. Yeah. He says, if you delight yep. in me, I would I would give you the desires of your heart. Right. But I never really pay attention to that delight mm-hmm. in me. And what Pastor Cliff was saying, he says that if you would delight in me, I'll put in your heart what I want you to want. Yeah, a lot of people just go to the... Uh, God will give you the desires of your heart. Yeah, but He's not going to give Talk you just that. the desires of your heart. You know, like when you're when you're when you're dwelling in in the, in the Lord, you're dwelling in Him, and you're you know, you're having you know special time with God and and all this different stuff. When you're in when you're in Him, you start to want want the things of God. You start That's to right. want His heart. You Amen. start to want That's you know right. whatever these things that God ha- yep. puts on your heart. So when He gives you the desires of your heart. It's really the desires of his heart because you're dwelling in him. Amen. So that's what the, I so know cool. the Bible says. I used to always pray that. that. Like I love that. When people would, you know, this is what I used to do. I used to pray for people. I'm like, you know, God, give them the desires of their heart. And then I start, as I stop, I'm like, why do I pray that over people? Because these people want like, oh God, I want a new car. That's the desire of my heart. God, I want a new, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, that I want to do this or do that. Yeah. But that's not really the desires of God's heart. Like that's really mm-hmm. just your own selfish desires. But when true. you're, when that's you're dwelling true. in the, in God and you're, and you're spending time with him and he'll put the things in your heart. Like you're going to be like, that's right. God, I, I want to do better. I want to be better. And those are the desires of my heart. But there's really things God wants for Comes you from him. Yeah. It's coming from him. So, cause you're spending so much time exactly. with him you're in a secret place. Mm-hmm. You're spending time in your word. And, um, um, I'm not even going to lie. I, I, I I never used to read my Bible every day. Mm-hmm. I might skip a day here or there, but yeah. once you read your Bible every day, mm-hmm. you start to get in, enlightened by the Holy Spirit. Mm. You start to just like, man, it's just like it's it just like man, you, it makes you like uh, it makes you so much stronger. Yeah. You don't want to do wrong. I mean, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to, you know, live like the world. <laughs> you don't want to, you you don't want to joke about it. But that's another thing because too. you're you're you know surrounded. yeah yeah you know you know that's another thing too like. You know, I don't like to you know, talk about people, you mm-hmm. know, make fun of people. You have to be above anything petty. Yeah. You know, talking about people's shoes and you're going out to a restaurant and doing dumb things and, and yeah. like, you know, I give you this amount of money, you go bark like a dog. All that kind of dumb stuff, that is that is like petty stuff. Mm-hmm. We have to be above that kind of yeah. stuff, you know? Like, uh, you know, we have to, uh, you know, that, that, um, I know I have some ladies listening. I, I, I got to confess some things here. <laughs> I want to confess. I, I, I want. I, I want to have not the full heart of a woman, but I, I want to have like the heart of a woman because <laughs> men are like, man, you're a sucker, man. No, you're a sucker, bro, because you act so hard, but you don't want to love nobody. Mm-hmm. I want that calm, gentle spirit that a woman has. Like yeah. women, I love you guys, not mm-hmm. for any sexual things. I love women. Yeah. Not for like you look good. I love women because women, you guys can do anything. Mm-hmm. You guys can. Do a lot of things that the men do. Yeah. You're not meant to carry it for a long period of time, but you can hold it down for a while. And I, lo- <laughs> I love that about women. Yeah. Women, uh, like when I look at my daughter and I hear my daughter talk, um, she's just so gentle and she's so nice. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, I want to be nice like that. I want to be gentle. And I, and I am. And I am. Yeah. I'm a pretty gentle guy. But I want more of God in my heart. Right. I want I want to be like compassionate to mm-hmm. the max. But still be able to hold it down with right. firmness of God, with the right. with the lion of inside me. You yeah. know what I mean? Right. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, I, I just love women in that, in, yeah. that, in that sense. You guys are just, you guys are amazing. You know, you guys yeah. are just, you're great. Women are awesome. Sorry, you know? That was my phone. Most of them, you know. Right. I told you to put that thing on vibrate. It is on vibrate. The table is shook. <laughs> 
Okay. So yeah, so we're, we're just talking about yeah. some things, but you know, but yeah, um, me and my daughter and her husband and the, and, our, and our immediate uh, uh, church family, we love the Lord. Mm-hmm. We, we 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 love the Lord, you know. And everything that you, you everything that you see on this channel is um, is not for us. Yeah. We're not trying to build our own kingdom, you know. We're, we're trying to build God's kingdom. Amen. We want to love people, you know. Um, I, I didn't, I'm not going to share this at the time, but, but I, I'm not going to share this at this moment, but, you know, there's things that I do with my finances that I, I like to give, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, do you live to give? I'm going to look at your eyes. Do you live to give or do you live to get? Mm-hmm. You know, are you always trying to get something or do you love to give? I, I love to give. I give things all the time. I give away things all the time. We got, I got some cl- stuff that came in, um, uh, this jacket that came in and, and some stuff. And I know I got it for free, but I really wanted to keep that jacket. <laughs> it was a Detroit Tiger jacket with all the patches on it. Mm-hmm. A leather jacket came in. You know, that some fr- a friend of mine blessed me. You know, but I, me and Rachel divided it all up and gave it all out. But I kept a couple of things for myself. And I really mm-hmm. wanted that jacket. But one of my customers <laughs> came in the shop and... I'm saying to myself, man, that looks like something he'd wear. He'd wear. So I said, hold on, man. I got done cutting <laughs> his hair, and I, I said, hold on a minute. And um, I went and got it. He was blown away. He was like, you give me this? You know, money? I said, I really don't want to give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't want to give you this, man. <laughs> now I was like, nah, I, 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 I do like I do like it. I, mm-hmm. I, I wanted to wear it. But it's a little bit too flashy for me, too. But yeah. not too flashy. I could have wore it. Yeah. But I just want to give. You know, you have to have a heart of giving, right? Right. You know, we have to live to give, you know, mm-hmm. like there is so much need out there, you know, yeah. so much need out there, you know, and uh, I've, um, um, I, I was taught my daughter to give too, remember mm-hmm. Rachel, when I used to come to the basement? Yep, yep. What was I doing he'd, 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 And we get in the basement, he'd, uh, you know, show me all of his money, like all the, you know, all the money and he'd, he'd say like, look at this, this is, all, this is what I made today, you know, that's like $500, I made $500 today. Instantly, you take that 50 off the top. That's just that. He's like, and then I'm giving a little bit more. Like, he would always do that, like, all the time. And that's what just taught me the same way, like, to to give. Like, every, you know, every check, you know, you take the 10%. But sometimes you give a little bit more, you know. And, you know, that's, you know, that's what God, you know, calls us to do. Is not yeah. trust in our money. Like, not to be like, oh, I got to hold on to this because I need this $50 mm-hmm. for this, for my gas. I need yeah. this. You know, you're not worried about that because you know that God's going to take care of everything because, you know, he sees that I can trust you. you I can trust you that you're going to, you know, you don't trust your money. You trust me. So, you know, that's how my dad would always do it. He'd always show me the money he makes and he'd, uh, you know, you know, sometimes he'd put it at 50 down or whatever for $500. Put it extra. Actually, it was 100 uh, oh yeah, twenty percent. Twenty percent. Oh, <laughs> I ain't telling yeah. about the time, but that's what it was. No, you gotta yeah. clear it up a little bit. I let me. <laughs> no. I ain't trying to tell you what I tithe, but it's like. 20%. I know that you would always tithe, but then give extra. So that is probably yeah, the extra. yeah. The extra was another fifty. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, like and you know that's. You're like what? You, sometimes you just slip me a dollar, a little dollar, yeah. so two dollars. Yeah, man. Like you know, like that's what it is, man. You mm-hmm. have to have a heart of giving, and it's not all about the money. I got there's four things. There's four things that I live by. I'm, I love to give. I love to give them my time, my talent, mm-hmm. my treasure, yep. which is your money. And I, I, I added another one, too. Oh, we got to give of our tongue. Yeah. The Bible says that there's power in our tongue of life and death. You know what I mean? Amen. And so, let's say, hey, let's give people a nice kind How you doing? How you doing today? You're looking nice. Thank you so much, man. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you can really bless somebody by how you speak to them, you know? How you, <laughs> you know, you can really bless them. So, it's yeah. like, man... Your time, you know, I got time to help you, but that treasure one is a lot, Rachel. Man, what, if you don't want to, people don't want to come off that body, do they? Lydia said, "I always teach the children to say, I am dressed, I am blessed, and I'm ready to be a blessing.'" <laughs> Who was that? Lydia from uh, Christ Family. Hey, Lydia, thank you so much, man. I love. I, I'll tell you, I love the church, man. I love the <laughs> church, and I, I, like I said, well, we got these new things coming up, man, and I can't say anything because you know. Uh, it's not rolling yet, and I don't want to. You know, it, it's all, man. I, I just, you know, we just want to love people, man. And mm-hmm. oh, man, that's what that's what we're that's what we're called to do. You mm-hmm. know, the Great Commission: go out there and make disciples, man. You know, go, you know, go go to the people, go to where they are, bring them in. You know, bless them, love them, yeah. and, and, and teach them about Christ. You know, show them the way to the cross. Show them, uh, uh, you know, that you know, show them to a, a, a eternal life. You know. Yeah. So yeah, um, yeah, man. I. 
um, yeah, I just love people. And I'm, Rachel, uh, you know, and her husband, they love people. And yeah. We got people in our church, you know. Um, hey, guys out there, I see um, we got Erica. Who, who who got Rachel? We got. Let's see, we have man Erica, like hey, Savior, I like Sean Marks in the house. We got Minister Nettle in the house. We got you know, we, hey, we got we got the fams in the house. My brother, hey, you know, like this this is not for us, right? Yeah. Like I, I watch a lot of videos. I watch like barber videos and mm-hmm. um, just to learn new things. I got to stay fresh, you know. I learn. I'm always watching videos to learn. Whenever I'm watching yeah. something on YouTube, it's not just for my leisure. Oh, I'm I'm confessed. There's one that I like. <laughs> There's something about people cutting grass that I really. <laughs> it's so satisfying. It's so satisfying. I like watching these guys. They, they put it in in, in the high. In, uh-huh. in this. They speed it up. <laughs> and I really. That's really satisfying to me. They so. put it in fast. Like, but they yeah, <laughs> they put it in fast. So yeah. But um, Some people but yeah, like the, you know, people chewing the food. Oh, I can't stand that. I, I, can't I really stop. don't like that. <laughs> yeah, but going back to uh, what what, what we say is that uh, you know, I see people they're trying to start their own companies and they start mm-hmm. you know make all these brands and they're, and they're doing good in their life and everything. The life mm-hmm. is going good, but yeah, they don't know God at all. You know, yeah. this is what this is what a lot of people don't know. Some people think that oh, you know, we're we're doing good. You know, uh. Uh, everything is going well. You know, we're, we're being blessed by God. Yeah. But a lot of times, people don't know that the enemy will bless people do people mm-hmm. people too. He took Jesus up on a mountain when Jesus was fasting at his weakest time. He yep. took him on a mountain. He said, "I'll give you all of this if you just, if you would just bow down and serve me." Mm-hmm. So the enemy has the power to bless you with material things. That's not a problem because he owns everything. Right. Only temporary. <laughs> it's only temporary it still belongs to God but he's just a steward over it but what happened in the garden we all know the story okay but he's in, te- he's in charge uh, temporary so he can give it out to, you, to whoever he wants mm-hmm. and so a lot of times people think they're being blessed by God but actually it's the enemy blessing them just to keep them away from God yeah because if you have everything and you, you got all that you want, you know, there's no need to run to God, no need to turn to God. Because exactly. you got all that you have, you know? So, yeah, you're, you're living good, and you got, you know, you got, you know, you got, you're you married, and you got car, you got business yeah, going. Got it's money. like, all your focus is on that. The enemy wants to keep you focused on right. that. Because once you're focused on that, you're not thinking about God. Mm-hmm. So he says, I'm going to bless you, even though I don't even really care about that. Some people think that the, the, uh, the devil <laughs> loves them. The devil don't love you. He just don't want you to love God. Mm-hmm. Oh, the enemy loves me. No, he don't love you. He just don't want you to love God. So he's going to give you stuff. Yeah. Uh, like, like like going back to people's motives. Yeah. People mm-hmm. do things like like uh, uh, out, out, of, out of motives that are not pure. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's doing a good thing. But yeah, why is he doing that? Right. So the enemy, he don't love you. He's not doing, he's not giving, he's not keeping you, he's not blessing your business and all these things because he loves you. Mm-hmm. He just don't want you to love God. Yeah. So, exactly. yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's it, man. But, uh, yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm excited about mm-hmm. the, uh, you know, the, the podcast and stuff yeah. because um, it's all for the people. Yep. Uh, we just love people, you know? Yep, exactly. We just love people. I'm uh, doing the uh, comments. <laughs> yeah, yep. Okay, yeah. Yeah, we just we just love people, you know? And, mm-hmm. and that's what this whole whole thing is about. Everything that you're hearing coming out of these um out of your phone and out of your t- whatever you're watching it on. Yep. It's not for our gain, you right. know? It's not for our gain, you know? If if, if if there's ever a point where, you know, uh, people start donating money and stuff to the channel, um and I'm not asking for money or anything like that, but you know, uh, we, we, we we're believing God for, for for some for some donors to come in because we we, we need money to the the, the if I get any further, I can let the cat out the bag. Uh, it's, but it's not for us, you know. what I'm saying like, yeah. I'm what well, Rachel was talking about with the finance stuff. Uh, like whenever, in a, in a, whenever I come in the barber shop, whenever whenever I get done working in the barber shop, I take out a percentage of money and I put it to the side, and it's called a uh, um, missions fund. I call it. A, I used to call it a missions fund. Now it's more like a giving. So, mm-hmm. and I let it build up, you know. And wherever God tells me to give it to, I give it. Amen. If a church needs some, or, or somebody's struggling in the church, and need you know uh, they have the rent. If I feel led by the Spirit, I'm going to give them that money. Mm-hmm. I remember one time I gave out. I'm not going to say who I gave it to. <laughs> I, I one time I gave out two thousand dollars for a mission strip. Yep. Like it wasn't nothing. I didn't even care about it. You know what I'm saying? God told me to give it. I gave it. And, I, and I'm not. And I'm not trying to brag about giving out money. Right. I'm just telling you. We don't care about money, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? But everybody needs money to do things. You, right. You need money to pay your rent, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, well, you know, so we're going to have, you know, uh, 
We're, trying, we're, we're going to try to raise some money some kind of way, but God already knows how to do it. <laughs> See, o- only thing we're praying about is what is our part. Yeah, right. God, what do you want us to do? Right. You know, so uh, that's our th- whole thing. So once we figure out what God, how God wants to, us to do it, we're, we're going to do our part and right. um and, and, and do it. But I'm not, you know, yeah, but yeah, um, it's, it's, it's going down. Some Amen. good things. Is that right, Rachel? Yep. Lydia, she's t- she's typing in the chat. <laughs> we, we love we love you. We love you. <laughs> yeah, we, we we love people, you know. And the, and the thing that uh, the thing that's coming, uh, like I said, like I'm, if I if I keep talking about this, something's gonna pop right, out of my stop mouth. Stop talking about it. <laughs> but I'm just gonna say it's all for people. Mm-hmm. It, it's all focused towards people. You know, we love people. Mm-hmm. You know, I love people, and I like I said, I want to have that compassion. I want to have a piece of my. I, I, I want half of my heart to be like a woman. <laughs> like, can you better stop saying that, man? You what you trying to say that you go that way? Nah. <laughs> you don't even know what I'm talking about. I want to have compassion like a woman. Man, women, I, I don't know, I'm back on it, Rachel. Like, <laughs> I see my daughter talking, and I'm like, man, I, I, want, I want that. <laughs> I want that. I, I want that. And I try to, I, and I, I'm pretty good, huh, Ray? Yeah. I'm pretty good? Definitely, definitely compassionate. <laughs> so what do you think? I think that you are very compassionate, very, yeah. okay. very loving. I always tell people, like, my, my dad's like, that's how I went growing up, like, as a kid, like, I'm not going to tell my dad anything. He loves me. Like, he's not going to be, like, mad forever. Like, you know, like, nah, it's just man, like, come on. you know, if ever I got, you know, got a whooping or something, <laughs> that same night he'd come in, you know, tell me he loves me, give me a kiss on the cheek, you know. That's right. It was never like, oh, he's just mad. My dad's mad at me. I never know when he's going to apologize. You, uh, and he would always apologize. <laughs> you never feared me, right? Never no? feared you. I never felt scared. No. Like, no, nope, it's all love. Right, you know? exactly. So like, you didn't want to, you didn't want to break my heart more than yeah, anything. Yeah, exactly. You didn't want to, you didn't want to break, break my heart or my trust. Exactly. You know? and, and most of all, you don't want to break God's heart exactly. or God's trust. Right, top. He's top. he's top. He's above everything. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we have to put God first. You know, right? We have to put God first in everything that we do. Mm-hmm. You know, before you do anything, you have to you have to set set a time of the day to spend with the Lord. You Amen. know, um, you know, and um. Um, Delander, look at Delander wrote. You see, what, what Del- <laughs> Delander, you know I can't read and talk at the same time. You know I got it. What is that? What they call that? He's definitely forgiving. I'm, I am thankful to have him as a father-in-law. I got to talk about Delander. <laughs> I got to talk about my son-in-law. <laughs> Delander, man, I couldn't ask for a better son-in-law than you, man. You, he, uh, he is the real deal. Yeah. You know, I mean, he passed all my tests, all my boxes. You know, um. He, man, it looks a little dark here. I'm sorry, but we was running. We was running like it, uh, we were a little nervous because it looks pretty good. Trying, oh, okay, that's good. Yeah, yeah, because you just don't know. Like you got, I got different monitors. I got one that's bright, one that's not bright. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, the man, he he uh, he's such a fine young man. You know, um, <laughs> uh, he, he, I'm telling you, man, he's like kind of like I'm not even gonna lie. Him and my daughter, I'm not I'm saying this because they're my my people, but. They're like one in a million. Like, like he's like. I mean, you don't find um, young men like him. He yeah, is for just real. one thing that I really like about him. He's good with his money. <laughs> yeah. You know, he he's uh he's not a tightwad. He just knows how to handle that money. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people get divorced over money. Yeah. You know, a lot of people get divorced over money. You know, it's it's crazy. Uh, people can't get a hold of that money, but he is good with his finances. You know, yeah. and what what he how does he do with you? What do he say? He just like if. Money's never an argument. <laughs> like, there's never like, why are you not giving me? Uh, you know, uh, oh, thank you, Pastor Patty. <laughs> um, yeah, Delander, we don't we don't ever argue about money except for when I'm just crazy spending <laughs> or just like, why'd you buy that? But no, for like seriously, like money is never a, hmm. a issue. Like I don't I know that you know he's gonna take care of it. Like no matter no matter what, like finances, he's t- I'm I'm taking care of always. Always have gas in my car. Always have. You know, food in my stomach, like good food too, not just like that cheap stuff. <laughs> we always yeah. eat out. You know, like Delander is just, I I can't express how how thankful I am, how much I love him because he's amen. He is like literally God's, you know, perfect person for me. Like that's right. I I love him. <laughs> yeah. So you know, we're gonna get ready to wrap up the show. We're gonna do uh, one more song and close out, but don't leave because um, we're gonna um, do a uh, we're gonna do a. Uh, uh, um, what channel you on? You're on channel six, okay. We're gonna do an altar call, 
I'm gonna we're gonna ask everybody to accept Jesus. That's the most um, important thing. But I'm gonna pass it over to Rachel Ross. take your place. There's no amount of, of, of things in this world that can take your place. There is no marriage or no relationship that we can put in front of you, O oh Lord. There is nothing that is greater than you, O oh God. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for your son, Jesus Christ. We're thankful, Father, that you, that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, into this world for us. We're thankful, God, that you sent your son to die for us, to carry our sins on his back. Jesus, we worship you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Cause there's nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence.
praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Well, at this time, we're going to um, we're gonna put out um, a petition of uh, salvation. Um, hallelujah. Glory to God. If there's anybody watching that might be tuning in later if you're not here, I know a lot of people that's tuning in are already saved, but if you watch this live feed later, um, whenever you watch it, if there's anybody out there who wants to accept Jesus in their heart, just repeat these words. Say, Lord Jesus, I accept you in my heart as my Lord. I turn from the world and I seek your face. I turn from this world and I run to you, Jesus. I confess right now with my mouth. I believe in my heart that you died and you rose again just for me. That you died for my sins on that cross. And I'm turning from this world and I'm running to you, Jesus. I accept the free gift of salvation. I accept your free gift of salvation. I don't want to live for this world no more. I accept you, Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior. Now, if you confess that prayer and you truly believe it, find yourself a good church home to get planted and start living for the Lord. If you said that prayer of salvation, the sinner's prayer, <clears throat> you are now born again. You are now a part of God's kingdom. But the Bible says faith without works are dead. You can't just say that and live the same way. You have to get involved. You have to start working for God's kingdom, ministering to people, get involved in the church, find a good church home, get planted, get sharpened with other believers. The Bible says that iron sharpens iron. So I encourage you to get planted. I'm Clinton Curtis. It's my daughter, Rachel Ross. We love you. And we are about to end this podcast. Thank everyone for tuning in. Yes, thank we truly you. love you. And Maranatha. <laughs>